Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Project Dark Knight Horror and I am your host, The Dark Knight. Today we're focusing on creepy forest videos. We're going to take a deep dive into the world of the great outdoors. So stick the kettle on and make a cup of tea and let me show you the truth. It's that time again, so close the door, shut the curtains and turn off the lights and go full screen as you get ready to watch. Frightening Forest Encounters Part 1 There are some forests and national parks on our planet that are the size of a country. And these forests are home to some of the world's most deadliest animals and insects. Furthermore, there are isolated parts of these forests and national parks that have never been explored or mapped by humans. Whether it's because of the terrain, sheer distance or the wildlife. These undisturbed ecosystems that have been left to mother nature to rule over are the last stronghold for predators and prey, flora and fauna, flowers and fruits, and bugs and berries. But you have to ask yourself a question. If a place like this has never been mapped or explored, then what else could be lurking in the shadows? More and more expeditions are being sent into the darkest depths of these unexplored strongholds. As guns and technology improve every day, it's getting easier and easier to venture into the dark. But every now and then, Mother Nature fights back. And out of these pockets of unexplored forest, stories and accounts are being reported. People are disappearing at an alarming rate in these forests and national parks. Or they disappear in one part only to be found weeks and months later, hundreds of miles away, with no apparent memory of how they got there. Whether you believe in Bigfoot, or a creature like it, or a skinwalker from the Navajo culture, or even UFOs. Part of us wants this to be true. To live in a world that is home to man-eating monsters, UFOs, skinwalkers and Bigfoot, holds a wonder and a mystery. This world is definitely better with these creatures and cryptids in it, right? Well, guess again because the people and accounts and evidence in the following videos will definitely have you changing your mind. Yes, my friends, there are some things lurking in the shadows that are pure nightmare fuel, and these poor unfortunate souls found that out the hard way. You're watching Project Dark Knight Horror with me, your host, The Dark Knight. Let's begin. Nightmare in Siberia. Our first creepy encounter happened between 2011 and 2013 to a Russian hunter named Sergei. Sergei has been hunting and surviving in the wild all his life. This man is hard as nails. He can literally go into the forest with just a penknife and in a few short hours he'll have made a tent that's better than some people's houses and a three-course meal good enough for Gordon Ramsay. Well, you know what I mean. There's actually three parts to this story. The first part is Sergei arriving and setting up his tent and camp, and part three is him retelling his version of events. But we're focusing on part two because that's the scary video where Sergei is stalked and hunted by something paranormal. This nightmare happens in the Siberian taiga a huge forest which spans half the size of America, filled with animals and insects that can kill you. The weather drops to minus 20 in some months and, in some places, you won't see the sun or the sky for days. Yes, my horror junkies, this forest is not for the inexperienced. Also, the chances of running into another person by accident is absolutely 0%. Another very important detail is that the forest has a reputation of being cursed. 
This story is as close to a real life horror movie as you're gonna get. Before his friend gave Sergei the directions and the name of the location, he warned Sergei that there's a legend of something, paranormal, that dwells in the forest and during the night, it's very dangerous to be walking around outside of your tent, especially without a weapon. But of course, Sergei didn't believe this. If only Sergei had known back then that this decision was to be one of the worst choices of his entire life. Sergei arrives in the Siberian Taiga and immediately films himself making his camp and setting up traps for small mammals and starts looking for tracks of bigger game like elk, bears and the red stag. Then on the second night Sergei finds what he's been looking for, animal tracks. So Sergei climbs up to a tree with his weapon and as the light of the dying evening fades Sergei waits for his quarry and this is where his nightmare begins. Around one o'clock in the morning, while Sergei was sitting motionless in a tree listening for the telltale signs of his prey, all of a sudden, in the distance, he hears strange, unnatural metallic banging in the middle of the forest. And what made it worse, the sounds were moving. Listen. Before, Sergei could hear metallic sound almost like if you got two dumbbell bars and started banging them together. Then, the noises changed. And remember, he was over 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles away from the nearest town or village. He hiked so far into the forest so that he would definitely not be disturbed by people. So, imagine his horror when he started hearing voices in the night that definitely sounded like more than one person. They were making loud noises to each other. It sounded like howling or shouting. Then, a few minutes later, Sergei made a terrible mistake. For whatever reason, he turned on his torch. And when he turned on his torch, his location would have been 100% given away. Тихо. Тихо. 
still this afternoon. Собираем. Растаскиваем головешки. Тихо. Блять, тушим давай. Тихо, 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 чтобы не поехала никуда. Я сейчас сольем уж нахуй. Снова, блядь. Ага. Что вот это вот, блядь? Что за херня, блядь? Так, пошли отсюда, потихоньку. Не загорится. Нет, уже не загорится. Вниз не улети.
Sergei was running scared through the forest and living a real life creepy pasta. So, in a final ditch attempt to preserve his life, Sergei climbed to the top of a tree and this is what saved his life. Because no sooner had Sergei reached the top of the tree and got somewhat comfortable, when directly below him, seconds later, something creepy starts crying. Listen. As he sat in the tree, again his bright light would have been easy to spot in the dark. Sergei should have turned it off and let it pass. So what do you think was stalking Sergei that cold dark night in the Siberian forest? Human? Ghost? Demon of the forest? Or maybe some kind of skinwalker pretending to be human so Sergei would approach it? The next hour went by without an incident. So the hunter climbed down off his perch and changed location, made another fire, happy that the night's horror was over. Or was it? Because sometime later, the voices, howling and sounds came back. And this time, once again, it was a lot more distinct. Sergei backs up against a makeshift cover, reloads and waits. Sergei squeezes off a few more rounds, 
Once again, all is quiet and he manages to stay safe until morning. Whatever happened that night in the Siberian Taiga, because of quick thinking, staying calm and being rational, and of course going prepared, Sergei survived. Even though he made a few poor choices, the man was still alive. But the question still remains, what was stalking Sergei in the forest that night? I don't think it was an animal, because the voices sounded like people and the words were all mumbled and jumbled up like they were imitating. Whatever it was still lurks to this day in the Siberian forest. I highly suggest that you watch all three parts to get the full story. The name is on screen. But don't forget, when you get there, tell them the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. Missing in the Woods Our next creepy forest encounter took place on the 4th of October 2016 and has been viewed over half a million times. A man was hiking alone in the woods in Suffolk County, New York one day when he came across something on a tree. As he gets nearer to the thing on the tree, he sees a fire pit and a tent and plastic bottles. For all intents and purposes, it looks like someone's camping. So he walks over to the tree and this is what he finds. Watch. Okay, um, we're deep, deep, deep in the woods. Sort of, we're like on the border cause like there's a side of the woods where there's people's houses. But I came to a trail that led to a trail that led to a trail up the hill and I came down this and as you can see probably can see it's fucking blocked there's trees knocked over blocking it and cut down so that it's hard to get down the hill but I saw what looked like a fire pit and since I've already found one back the way I came I thought this might be something similar so I come down the fucking hill now remember, we're still in the woods. We're still in the fucking woods, right? I don't know what this is. Do you see the fucking trees? Look at the white shit, okay? I was like, okay, these are probably no trespassing signs or maybe it's something for the, for the wildlife or something. And look, look, we're, we're bordered on all sides by hills. Anyone with any sense of strategy or tactics, let's, uh, you know, being in the center of a bunch of hills is tactically disadvantageous because people can hide on the tops and throw things or shoot at you. Anyway, I'll cut right to the chase because I might die. Look what these fucking are. What the fuck is going on in here? And this isn't like woods I've never been to. Like, I've been here before. I've been here a lot. I've been here so much, I've actually been to the hospital getting stitches because of some of the adventures that I've had. That's beside the point. These are all different fucking people. And they're all just... This is Utah, Florida. They're all different. They're all fucking different. Every single one. This one's from Georgia. And look at this shit. Like, look... Look where the fuck we are. Who the fuck does something like this? What's this? What's this? This is some kind of oil filter, I think. Old as fuck. Um, yeah, so like, anyway, I'll tell you the uh, location is inside the, uh, the dunes. The dunes on East Jericho by where Pathmark used to be. You gotta go in and you gotta just keep going in making what did i do how did i get here made a series of lefts and went through the fence and i just mostly followed the main trails and then i kind of just kept making a left this one's from south carolina there's a good reason for the posters which i'll get to but to jacob this looked dodgy as hell the path led to a makeshift campsite and all around him it was elevated so he was standing in like a bowl 
so if someone wanted to shoot or attack him, this would be the perfect ambush spot. And, because of all the missing posters, this place looked like someone's hideout who had probably done some bad things, which is why Jacob had his knife ready. Jacob seriously thought he was in danger, and so he filmed this just in case something happened to him. Um, Jesus, fuck, like, look not only how many there are and the fact that we're in here, but the fucking trouble that somebody went through. Like, who the fuck is gonna... Jesus, fuck. Sorry. Spiderwebs. Oh, no, this is a dude. It's a dude, 26. Last seen August 5th. There's no year. LAPD. Somebody's fucking standing in this shit. To tape these up. I don't, I don't even know whose house that is down there. I know anything about this uh, fucking fire pit. Somebody clearly went to a lot of trouble to make the fire pit. You gotta understand, if that is somebody's property, and I'm pretty sure that it is, considering you can hear the traffic coming from that direction, considering this is the side of the woods where people's property be at, and considering that's like, that's some shit. Fuck. Like, this is bad. I do not have a gun. All I got is this, which, incidentally, was my birthday present to myself. This is the Kabar Bacon Maker, which is uh, just perfect, but I mean, what am I going to do against a guy with a gun, you know what I mean? What's this one? Christopher Oregon. Fucking spider webs. And we got this one. And this obviously, these, you could tell, these aren't new. Like, not just that this is 2012, Noblesville, Indiana, right? Look at the fucking tape. Look at the water damage. These shits have been hanging up for a, a, a while. And look at this, like, just fucking look at this. Who the fuck is gonna decorate this? What the fuck? This guy's a grown up. Two thousand and nine. Burbank, California. Two thousand and nine. The other problem with this shit, I mean, consider, you know, I'm, like, this is, this is a fucking hog hunting knife. Versus somebody that doesn't have a gun, this thing is badass, but, if, oh, fuck. There's a dog down there. If I can see him, he can see me. All I'm saying is, if I have a gun, and I'm facing a guy with a knife, I'm probably, uh, going to emerge victorious, but what the fuck was I saying? No, that dog threw me off. There might be people down there. I should, I should definitely get the fuck out of here. See, the problem is, you know, obviously I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly well camouflaged, but I'm, this is a valley and I'm surrounded by hills. Somebody could be better camouflaged than me more heavily armed than me. They could totally get the jump on me. Now, what's this one? Tim? Uh, Hamilton Police. Um, 2013. Ancaster. I, I, don't, I don't know what that says. But, uh, Indiana University, 2011. What's this one? Laura Marie, Pinellas County, missing 2009. Fuck, there's more. There's, there's one there, one there, there's one there, there's one right in front of me. One there, and one there. Let me just, uh, look at that. These are, these are just the ones that I've gone in close up, close up, that I did close up so, so far. Look at this, look at this, what the fuck is this? Carolina Beach, North Carolina, 2009. And look, look, you had to walk through all this shit to hang these up. 
another, another missing guy. Brian Schaefer, 2006. OSU medical student. Look over there. You see that shit? The orange thing on the tree. It's a drop light. Or this. Holy shit, I just realized what I'm looking at. The video's not doing it justice, but this bundle of sticks, they're lashed together. That's a, that's a cage of some kind, or a hut, or a lean-to, or something. And over here, in the middle of the fire pit, that's a shovel. I don't even know if this fucking shit is booby-trapped. Think about it, somebody that could put this together, like, they could be watching me right now. What's in there? Twenty-one years old, Santa Ana, California, missing 2006. All of these sticks that you can see, they're all lashed together at right angles, as if to make a cage, or a shelter, or a lean-to, or a trap. And this, this part right in the middle, it's a hole. It's a filled-in hole, but it's a hole. I'm assuming that whatever this is, or was, collapsed. Whatever it was, it was intricate, and it clearly took a lot of time to make somebody worked pretty hard on this. What's this one? Stacy Peterson, 23 years old, missing from Illinois, 2007. Oh shit, I heard voices. We have to get the fuck out of here. So after looking around a bit more, Jacob finds some sticks that were tied together that looked like someone was building a cage. Then, by the campfire, Jacob finds a shovel. So, because of the tent, the missing posters, the shovel and the cage, Jacob puts one and one together and gets serial killer and gets the hell out of there. All the while looking around at his surroundings just in case he gets attacked. As soon as Jacob got out of the woods, he called Suffolk County Police Department and reported what he had found. Also, he showed them the footage on his phone. Well, the police raided the area and searched it and were able to get a hold of a man who owned the tent and the sleeping bag, who lived in the house just beyond the campsite. It turns out that the missing posters were real. But a group of friends were organizing the Halloween party and so the posters were part of the decoration. They made a fire pit with benches to sit on and the shovel was to cover the ashes after the fire. And so the police told Jacob a few days later and all the posters were gone. So that was the reason for all the posters. Can you imagine walking into the woods and seeing all those missing posters? To me, when I first watched this, it looked like Jacob had walked into the campsite of a serial killer. or at least someone with psychotic tendencies or someone who wanted to do some really bad things. But in the end, there was a valid reason for it. There's actually three parts to this story. I only showed you part one. So if you're interested, the name of the channel is on screen. So jump on over to check it out. The last video was uploaded two years ago. So it looks like the channel is no longer in use. But you never know, if they get a lot of comments and views, it might just make them want to start to upload again. So, in that case, don't forget to tell them the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you.
Conversation with a Skinwalker. Our next creepy forest video comes from a channel called Squaring That Circle and was titled The Hunted Strange Sounds. The video was uploaded two years ago but I want you to keep in mind that the actual recording took place in 1971. Three friends were in a forest camping, having a few drinks and spending the weekend together. Through the night they kept hearing growls and snorts and grunts but pretty much put it down to forest sounds. That is, until the early hours of the night, when the sounds got closer and more distinct. So the friends started recording. Watch. The first time I ever heard anything was later in 71. I came back up with the guys and, and uh, we was uh, here by the stove. There was a stove here then. <laughs> And uh, as soon as it starts getting dark, we'd go in. Sometimes you might hear a grunt or a whoop or a big blowing sound or something like that. And that's when you know you want to get inside the shelter because you still don't know what you're dealing with. Whatever it is, it's big, very, very big. We all go inside, close the shelter door, and uh, that's a wall that we put between these trees. And then we'd strap it inside a cable. And then, uh, then they would start making their sounds. And that was in 71 when I first started hearing them. And we started recording them. Maybe having to shoot our way out. You're just sitting there, all of you are, are kind of petrified. You're just waiting to, for the walls to break open, and something reach in there and grab you and hold you up, and waiting for the light to break in the cracks of the walls. And it never happened. That's the strange part because you hear it over there, but you don't see it over there. As time went on, 72, the same thing. You know, whatever it was we thought it might be trying to scare us out. Maybe this is their territory, but. I, we don't know. We can only guess at why they were doing what they were doing and uh, that they were observing us, that's for sure. As the video starts, you can hear what sounds like an animal howling. So the campers started to mimic the sounds and this is when things got strange. When the group of friends started mimicking the animal, the animal started to call back. Then, the weirdest thing of all happened. The hoots and howls stopped and, in its place, something else started talking to the group of friends. But, there was something off with the way it was talking. It wasn't in any language known to man. It was random sounds that came across like a man talking or people. And that got me thinking. So I did some digging and apparently this phenomenon happens a lot in woods and forests and national parks. Something is imitating human speech, but from the pitch and tone of their voice, 
it's not human. So, when the friends got home, they sent their tapes and recordings to a Dr. R. Lynn Curlin, who was a professor at the University of Wyoming, to get a scientific validation that the sounds the campers experienced that night were real. The analysis revealed that the sounds were made by a creature who was physically larger than an average man. Based on the pitch and the sounds, the university estimated that the creature's height was around 8 to 9 feet tall and there was more than one creature recorded that night. The frequencies found were clearly lower than human and their distribution does not indicate that they were a product of human vocalization or speech. In other words, the university put the voice frequencies into a database of thousands of other animals and it came back with no match. Whatever they had recorded that night was unknown to science. And the inspection revealed that there were no cuts or edits or overlays. So the tape was 100% real. A skinwalker is a creature from the Navajo culture which has the ability to shapeshift into different forms. It is also said to imitate its prey, whether that's by shape, size or sound. Whether you believe in skinwalkers or not, the legend has been around for hundreds of years and something like that doesn't just happen for no reason. Strange Noises This man was out in the forest of Ontario in Canada when he heard these supernatural screams that resonated into the sky. It lasted about five minutes. Well, call me nuts, but I reckon that came from out there. But, well, unless the trees back, backed it down and... Oh, it's cold. Unless the trees made it echo, I don't know. I've never heard a sound like that before. I don't like it. Oh, yeah. It did have an element of, uh, ugh, eerie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My phone's about to die anyway. I don't want to be out here with that phone. So there it is again, do you relax? I really don't like it. I'm going back. Oh, don't go just yet. Maybe if we just went a bit further up, I might see something. Maybe it wasn't 2012, it was, it was 2013. <laughs> Fucking hell. Alright, okay. It's not an animal, is it?
Oh yeah, yeah, that was loud. All right. Hang on, I've got to turn this off. Fuck, oh, I don't like this. This man was out hiking in the Gila National Forest and he believes he recorded two cryptids talking to each other. He heard several loud bangs or pops like something was banging on a tree. Then, to his left and right, something strange. This land has history tied to Native American tribes, the Navajo and the Mohican. And this is what he recorded. Watch. The Watcher. Our next case comes from the TikTok account, Khoos. And when you see all three clips, then let me know what you think this is. A group of friends are in the woods smoking and drinking and having a good time when, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, they hear a high pitched scream which makes them stop in their tracks and start recording. In the comment section, most people believe that this is a mountain lion, but when you see part three, it might make you change your mind. Watch. I don't know. That was a fucking child screaming. Joe, listen. We're like a fucking woman or something. That was a fucking, that was a female fucking screaming, Phil. Please, please, please. No, 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 no. Oh my god, Phil, it sounds like somebody's being fucking raped. Joe, listen. We're like a fucking woman or something. That was a fucking, that was a female fucking screaming, Phil. Please, please, please. No, 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 no. Oh my god, Phil, it sounds like somebody's being fucking So, they hear a high-pitched scream and go closer for another look. That's when they see something hanging off a tree. It looks like some Blair Witch shit. Some kind of stick figure hanging off a tree branch. And the guys swear that they never saw it before. So, they go to remove it but then this happens. Watch. Oh my God, Phil, it sounds like somebody's being fucking raped.
Dude, you need to fucking help that fucking person, man. It's probably something fucking like movies. Phil, that sounds like fucking like some scary movie you know, shit. Fucking middle of dude, nowhere. I have the biggest fucking revolver ever, dude. I have a fucking gun. I'll do it first. That's probably. Dude, we're in the fucking middle of nowhere. There's. Dude, that sounds like some haunted ass shit, dude. What happened to the other steel target? There's two. Wait, what the fuck There's is one that? right there on the ground. What the fuck is that? It's on the ground. What, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is what? That right there. What the fuck is that? Dude, that's not normal. No. Please tell me you guys are fucking with me. Oh! No, 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 no! Well, did you see it? There was something in the background watching the group of friends, and they had no clue. It was actually a viewer who saw it and messaged the account holder about it. It's been enhanced to make it easier to see. Watch. What's up everyone, this is part three. Um, sorry it took so long. I sent that video to one of my good friends and he brightened up the exposure and slowed it down and then he sent it back to me. And I'm a little fucking baffled about what I fucking just saw. Um, I, I Originally I thought it was a barn owl or a mountain lion as well as everyone else is saying in the, in the comments. But now that I'm seeing this, this video that he slowed down and bumped up this exposure, I'm freaking out. Take a fucking look at it right now. So... What do you think it is? A barn owl? A mountain lion like the comment said? Or something unexplained? Let me know what you believe down below. If you've seen something strange, scary or amazing and you've captured it on camera, or maybe you're a paranormal investigator and you need some help to get that content out there. Or you might be unlucky enough to live in a haunted house and you need some help and answers because you feel you're all alone. Well, you're not. Project Dog Night Horror is here for you. So send in your videos, clips, links, stories, ideas, photos and more to Project Dog Night. The email is on screen. Thank you. Red Eyes For our final piece of creepy camping footage, we're going back 12 years to a YouTube channel. Ruben and his friends, Tom and Jeremy and Bradley, were all out camping at their usual hangout spot, making s'mores and having a few beers and generally just having a good time. They were just about to make some hot dogs when Bradley spotted something glowing in the background. This piece of footage is four and a half minutes long and I'll play it all before we analyze it. Some bits of the footage may seem too fake to be real but whatever this thing is with the red glowing eyes, it has been seen many times in many other videos. Watch. All right, boys. This is Camping 2010 with uh, Trevor and Jeremy hey, hey, and Tom. Hey. What's up? That I can't hardly see because it's really dark. I can't find the light on this thing, dude. Hello. It's just kind of. I see Trevor waving. Okay. <laughs> Can I get my phone? Let's see me get up and get the fire. Oh, oh. That, that's there he is, Tom. We're going to do some rope swing madness later, Sweet. hopefully. Jeremy, I can't see you, buddy. But He's somewhere. There's his leg. 
He's somewhere in that vicinity. What would we do with the hot dogs? Hot dogs. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm gonna go for some marshmallows, dude. For some awesome. marshmallows. This is our campfire. Centinella candles. Uh, you can't focus on those. I'm still trying to figure out this camera, dude. It's brand new. It's in my boot. Not this guy. <laughs> Sorry. Trevor. Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. I swear, is this the sleeping quarters? Our candles. Yeah, the keep candles our, keep, the keep our out. bugs off of us. No tent because we're men. No tent. That's right. Men. Manly men. We sleep beneath the stars. Discussing stars. That's right. Man. Is that a full moon? Guys, what is that? I think it is. Yeah, I think full moon night. What's what, Bradley? Seriously, guys. There's yeah, something I, really, I seriously saw something over there. Dude, Tom, did you not see it? Dude, there whatever. was something there for like two Jeremy, minutes. Trevor. Dude. It was over there. Dude, whatever, man. Man, dude, dude put some more wood on this fire. I am not going to sit here Weird. with this like, thing. Dude, I'm telling you, it was like, it was there what? for like, like two seconds. Dude, it was probably over there. there. Yes, the right over there where you're shining the light in that area. Over there. Ever seen before. Yes, there was, yeah. Jeremy. But the Tom weird. and I both saw it, dude. It, it was probably a squirrel. It was nuts. It was nuts. I don't know, man. It's not a squirrel. What would you say it was a squirrel? But it, okay. Okay. A woodland creature. Okay, what squirrel would look like that, Tom? It, it's an animal. Okay, We're in the know, woods. Go lose. figure. Don't, don't lose. Uh, hey, Tom? Yeah. Guys? What? Oh, my God. What is that? Yeah, that dude. Oh my That's God. it. That's it. I t oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Oh, crap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah! Get in, get in, get in, guys. Get in, get in, get in. Okay, okay. Where's, where's the keys? I don't know. Seen it. Where's, where's Tom at? Where's Tom? Where's Tom? 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 All right, dude. We got the boat. Came over there. We'll come get you, dude. Tom. Tom. Guys, I'm over here. Are you alright? Thank God, are you okay? Dude, I think I lost it. I don't know. I think it's right behind me. I'm not sure. What is it, dude? What is it? I don't know. I you need to jump. Come on, get down here with us. You'll have to jump, Come on, Tom. Get not jump. This is too high. Dude, Tom, if you don't jump, jump it's going to get you. You have to jump. It's like, oh my gosh! Ah! Huh. Come on, Tom. Come on, swim, man. Swim, Tom. Swim. Swim. Oh my god, did you see it? No. No, we've not seen it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, what is. Dude, what is. Oh my gosh, dude, did you see that? Thank oh my god, god you're too bad. That's the same thing we've been seeing. That's it, man. Let's get out of here. Let's find out what that thing was. Oh, dude, it's another trap there. Look. Oh, Sorry, man. Why does it keep going? We've got to go, like, right now. Oh my god. Now. What? There it is. Did you see it? Do you see it? No. No. Hold on. Dude, if we get this on camera. <laughs> there it is. That's what? it. Dude, why does it keep chasing us? I don't know. Oh my goodness. That is. Dude, oh I my gosh. about to jump in the water. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Go! What the heck? It's chasing the boat, Tom. Go! Oh my goodness. Go. Go. So like I said, Bradley spots two glowing eyes coming towards him and when they saw what it was, they ran away. As they scattered, Tom got separated from the group and he went the wrong way, but he managed to call out to his friends who waited for him. Tom was high up on some rocks and they told him to jump and at first he says it's too high, but then he sees the creature following behind him, so he throws caution to the wind and jumps. He makes it to safety just as the creature follows him into the lake. Now, some of you might be thinking this is too fake, and you might be right. But every year, thousands of people report seeing creatures with red glowing eyes just like this. Reese Davis and friends was camping just outside his holiday home on the edge of the forest when a creature with red glowing eyes on skinny unnaturally long legs and arms comes creeping on all fours 
to the campsite. Watch. This is great. I feel like actually killer vibe. I don't know. Xbox Wait, yo, 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 shh, shh, yo, 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 shh, shh. What in the, the hell fuck? is that? Oh. Um, what? What the hold dude, up? What? Dude, is that a person? Oh, uh, we should probably. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. Close it, close it, close it. Please lock it, please lock it. Oh, my God. Okay. I think we left someone's phone up there. Yeah, we left someone's phone. It doesn't matter. Bro, we'll get it later. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Daddy, scary. Get back, get back, get back. Oh, my God. Wait, Nick, did you lock the door? I don't want to get close to the door. Holy crap. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Make sure it's locked. Make sure it's locked. No, no, make sure it's locked. Make sure it's locked. Okay, 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 okay. 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 That is creepy as hell. Dude. What the fuck is that, dude? <laughs> Whatever it is, it comes strolling down the forest path towards the group and again it has red glowing eyes. The friends run inside and start filming from the safety of the cabin. Now, again, this could be fake. It does look like a man but its arms and legs are so long and skinny and the creature itself looks very tall, almost unnaturally. The friends exited at the back of the cabin, got into their car and booked it through the night. Reese Davis never uploaded another video ever again after this and his channel still lies dormant. The most famous sighting of a creature with red glowing eyes actually took place in a small town in West Virginia called Point Pleasant. Hundreds of townsfolk reported seeing a humanoid creature with red glowing eyes between 1966 and 1967. So much so, it was reported in the newspaper the Point Pleasant Register, dated November the 16th, 1966. If you want to do some digging, it was titled Couple Sees Man-Sized Bird Creature. Soon, people from all over the town flocked to doctors and hospitals complaining about headaches, seizures and memory loss. Soon, the national press got involved and the National Guard tried to catch whatever this creature was. But just as soon as it arrived, one night, the red-eyed Mothman disappeared into legend. And ever since then, books and movies were made about what happened that year in Point Pleasant. The Mothman will forever go down as one of the most well-known cryptids of all time. But who knows, maybe one day the Bigfoot or a skinwalker might just decide to visit your town. Then, just like the Mothman, Bigfoot or the Skinwalker or something else will step out of the shadows of fiction and forever into the realm of fact. But until then my friends, keep looking to the stars, into the basements, under your beds, forests, woodlands and national parks because earth is huge and some places are undisturbed, unmapped and untouched and who knows what else is lurking in the dark? If you've made it to the end, 
Then, I salute you. You prove that you are a true fan of horror. So remember, if you're interested in ghosts, poltergeists and demons, urban exploring haunted houses and random nautica, animal attacks, cursed objects and strange dark mysteries, then Project Dark Knight Horror is the channel for you. What a month it's been. First, my channel got hacked and then YouTube terminated it. I lost absolutely everything and when all was lost, and so was I, it was you who got me by. There was a point where I couldn't be bothered anymore and I wanted to give up. But again, it was you who got me by. Yes, my friends, when I was down and out, it was your comments and love and support. They were like a light in the dark and you showed me my way back. So I fought for my channel. And after a lot of emails, phone calls and stress, I got my channel back. So from the bottom of my heart, I humbly thank you, every single one of you, my subscribers, viewers and my online friends. In the next few days, I'll be starting a brand new channel called The Dark Knight Scary Stories. So, if you like scary stories, missing 411s, creepypastas, dark mysteries, urban legends, true crime and much much more, then subscribe to both of my channels. It's free after all. My main channel project Dark Knight Horror and my second new channel The Dark Knight Scary Stories, which will be starting any day now. So. Stay tuned for more. Before I go, I got another tip for you. Why not join Project Dark Knight on my private Facebook group? Here, you'll be in great company. You've got lots of different people from lots of different countries, from lots of different backgrounds. But we all share one thing in common, and that is our love for horror. So, if you need a place to post your thoughts, comments, videos and clips, or a place online where you feel like you belong and don't get judged regardless of your background, race or religion. Or if you just need a chat and some friendly advice, then Project Dark Knight Horror Facebook group is for you. I absolutely love all things horror and I'm so passionate about my channel. So if you liked what you see and you think I deserve it, then subscribe to Project Dark Knight. I want to say a massive thank you to my lovely Patreons. These people go that extra mile to support my channel and to help the channel grow. Some of the names on this list have been with me since day one. Their names are Thorson Lip, Turtle Chief Nine, Julie Six, Andrew M. Gross, Laura Rohde, George Lopez, Cookie Ooh I Don't Know, Countess Monette. Greasy Cox, Donna Sayers, D. Michael Smith, Catherine Murphy, Sean Squillis, Giovanni Dad, Trumpet, Anna, Love You Eminem, KJ Majid, Devin Keener, Honey Badger, Charlie X24, Judah, William Haney, Jimmy's Jammin, Vladimir Kapek, Christy Santi Steven, and Dustin Turley. It's thanks to kind people like you who believe and support the channel and keep the engines running at Project Dark Knight. And always remember, you've been watching Project Dark Knight Horror and I'm still your Dark Knight. Signing off. Peace! Don't ever laugh as the hearse goes by For you may be the next to die They wrap you up in a big white sheet From your head down to your feet They put you in a big black box And cover you up with dirt and rock